Well, hello. <clears throat> That's me again. Today is uh, Monday. It is the 25th of September 2023. And you know what? I spoke about this on many occasions just recently again, that we live in quickening and thing, things begin to happen with such incredible speed. We're indeed accelerating towards some kind of the resolution. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be the one day resolution. We're talking about uh, resolution in historic terms. It might take a year, maybe two. But the point is, uh, I was preparing the video on economics, on how it reflects on the uh, global, so to speak, balance of power. And bang, uh, Canada gave us so much to talk about. And I want to start with uh, actually not so much reporting on them but I want to start with obviously what George Galloway did and nobody can do it better than him and he used the proper term infamy they all got it infamy um, and uh, the way he obviously with his uh, wonderful verbiage and you know ability to speak incredible English he put it everything well so well that uh, I pr have nothing to add really to what he said uh, but this also brings us to the point that we still have to review it you know we cannot just let it uh, slide and here we have obviously everybody understands that that um, um, on this uh, weekend we had a uh, uh, Canadian Parliament giving the standing ovation to Yaroslav Hunka, who fought for the 14th Division of the Waffen SS. And Can Canadian Parliament gave a standing ovation to an outright Nazi collaborator. He is not just collaborator, that's the issue. I mean, uh, this is also an improper term. He is Nazi. 14th Division of Waffen SS called Galice uh, is our Nazis. I mean, they just happen to be Ukrainian, but again, uh, I mean, Nazism and Western Ukraine, and they just go hand in hand. It was always there since the start of the World War II, and actually earlier than that, and you can ask, obviously, Poles who have been massacred in tens of thousands in Volhynia, uh, and uh, it goes on and on and on, and and then people begin to ask, like my wonderful friend Eva Bartlett, how did it happen? How did it happen that Ukraine became the, basically the safe haven for Nazis? So much so that people already openly show and mocking their, your, uh, their parliament like, you know, uh, Justin, Canadian Deputy Prime Minister Christopher Freeland, by the way, who, who is a granddaughter of the also devout Nazi, and she is Ukrainian, issues a preemptive process to the statement by Canada Speaker of the House that yesterday's invitation and the standing ovation to the Waffen SS veteran Yaroslav Hunka was actually an embarrassing blunder. And believe me, the uh, fact is that um, what you have to understood, and I've been, I'm not going to beat around the bush, returning back to Yevon Bardet, who raised uh, actually the issue of how did it happen that Canada became such, and in the end soiled itself for the whole world of normal and honorable people to see. Uh, very simple. Uh, this were British who allowed 2000, uh, initial 2000 SS, Waffen SS division, Galicia, Ukrainians, uh, to be shipped to Canada in 1945. Uh, British being British, they separated, you know, they didn't allow this scam to be, uh, to, uh, to end up in Britain, despite the fact, of course, of uh, Churchill and other people in uh, British, uh, uh, political and military top, you know, kind of being pregnant with this idea of the Operation Unthinkable to attack the, uh, actually the ally, just recent ally, Soviet Union, after the end of the Cold War, uh, pardon me, World War II. So yeah, those people have been sent to uh, Canada, they've been accepted as the refugees, and guess what, they procreated, and now everybody, any Russian with, who have half a brain and IQ above room temperature, they know that uh, uh, Canada is a hotbed of uh, Nazis, and now we, you know, they let the guard down and now exposed 
everything we needed to know about modern day Canada. My initial um, reaction was to uh, that Russia should actually break off the diplomatic relationship because uh, there's nothing to talk about with people who are in Canadian Parliament and let alone Justin Trudeau who is a psychopath. But that brings us to the larger issue of why this has happened. How the country which was proud to be an anti-Hitler coalition, um, how it ended up like this. It's not only inevitable, it's totally logical from the development of the modern world and of course if you specifically if we're talking about uh, parts of the Anglo-Saxon world which are island parts we're talking about Australia we're talking about the uh, United States we're talking about um, Canada and while there's no doubt that some people died I mean trying fighting for anti-Hitler coalition among the Western allies None of the three countries which I just listed, well, New Zealanders too, so Five Eyes, whatever, however you want to call it, uh, is the fact that uh, they don't know what war is. Canada doesn't know what war is. Uh, same as the United States and uh, Canada during the World War II, they actually launched themselves back into orbit from the, uh, uh, the Depression and Great Depression, and God, they really uh, prospered on that. And this is the fact of life which nobody... With the half brain can deny. And so when you look at this guy, for example, uh, uh, Mr. Rota, the speaker of the um, uh, uh, Canadian Parliament, apologized for honoring the Ukrainians who fought in Nazi, in Nazi unit in World War II. Well, there were more than that Nazi unit. There were, I'm pretty sure, if uh, Mr. Dimyanuk was at some point of time caught. Well, I guess. Uh, you know, the law enforcement and counterintelligence services of Canada are definitely doing wrong things because you can literally speed away and you will hit some Nazi uh, uh, sympathizer in Canada. And when uh, what is really important here, uh, the guy being there, well, they're scumbags, all of them are all Western politicians, practically without exception, are scumbags and psychopaths. He actually apologized only to Jews. Uh, where did he go without mentioning? Poles, Slovaks, who have been massacred by, um, primarily civilians, uh, who have been massacred by 14 Waffen SS. I don't know. Obviously, he's not talking about Russian Red Army POWs who have been tortured with the most brutal tortures. So, but yeah, that's uh, Canada's modern day heroes. And while George Galloway stated yesterday that, oh my God, I think so now, Justin Trudeau and this parliament, there will be the consequences during election. Uh, here is the only place where I disagree with George. No, there will be not. And the reason I'm saying that because, first, uh, you have to understand that um, Western public overall, I mean, what is, it's uh, pretty much everywhere, but it's especially uh, true about North American public. They have the uh, attention span of the guppy fish, you know. So although I had people who have been accusing me of discriminating against guppy fishes, but the point is they will forget. And again, uh, look up uh, Justin Trudeau. He have been around since has been around since 2015, and Canadians continue to vote for him. And here's the issue: you have the situation of the split nations, tour nations. The number of the normal people is decreasing constantly, which is the tragedy for the Western world because uh, primarily what we have, especially in your generation, they are brainwashed. They cannot even put two and two together, and they will uh, obviously nature vote for people who manipulate with them emotionally and you know just basically light outright lie to them and this is primarily not that I again make no mistake in American terms I'm not Republican I'm independent but I mean <clears throat> if you look at the Democratic Party by the way who's uh, obviously their body is Justin Trudeau and whatever the scumbags who sit on the liberal part in their um in the Canadian uh, Parliament, uh, that's who they are. And for them, you know, let me show you something. You think so, United States has clean hands here? Oh boy, you certainly have to uh, <clears throat> uh, look at it from the very, very different perspective because actually uh, um, the Azov Battalion uh, uh, and uh, you know what Azov Battalion is, uh, it's of course the uh, well, Ukrainian uh, 
Nazi SS type formation. It's not battalion. They are more on the uh, brigade size, size uh, level. But look at this. Jerusalem Post uh, actually reported in 2016, if you remember, that the U.S. lived, uh, you know, U.S. Congress lifts ban on funding neo-Nazi Ukrainian militia. Well, they're not in militia anymore, as we know. Of course, later on they slapped the ban again. But it's too late, guys. There are a bunch of the members of U.S. Congress who supported, who applauded, one of them being a psychopath and genocidal maniac, Mr. Lindsey Graham. And that brings us back to the issue which I'm talking about <coughs> since the start of this video. Somebody elects him. People of South Carolina elect the guy who is obviously mentally is not himself, and he's simply genocidal maniac. He is covered, and you know, and this is the majority of people who get into modern politics because this is the social demand. This is the social order. You cannot get well. You sometimes, once in a while, you get people who are more or less honest and honorable people, but you need to have those people to have no principles whatsoever, other than self-promotion and re-election and then working for <clears throat> enriching themselves. I mean, uh, as uh, famous the reason goes, how do you know that a politician lies? Well, his lips are moving and this is exactly what happens. And now the Canada, what can I say? Um, just let me remind you, in <clears throat> 2000, in the year 2000, at that time, very important uh, Ottawa Citizen uh, uh, newspaper, they wrote the article. The article was by John Robson. They removed this article since then, of course, because there was an embarrassment. But guess what he wrote? He wrote about Russia and he stated that normal for Russia is filthy, corrupt, menacing and hollow. Nothing good has happened there. No will it. Russia is a lump of dung wrapped in the cabbage, uh, leaf hidden in the outhouse. Of course, they tried to uh, apologize after that then the scumbag robs and wrote the uh he is by the way the uh scholar as he you know uh that's the type of scholars the uh, west today operates with uh, but it was too late of course it's all went around and of course russians remember that and they penned it up made check box and uh, then you look at mr clapper who is again called back to his duty i mean and the guy basically was speaking openly, you can look it up, that Russians are genetically predispositions to be liars and, you know, you know, penetrate something, steal something. So, yeah, it's normal. It's normal. Most of the North American or uh, Anglo-Saxon elites are not Russophobic. They uh, will applaud anybody who kill Russians. Women, children, if they're raped, is even better. This is primarily most of the uh, U.S. Congress people. This is evidently now a uh, Canadian parliament. And Canada took it. And believe me, I think so, <laughs> they will take it again, and they probably re-elect, despite the fact all those numbers and everything, uh, evidently, uh, the, uh, by the time of the elections, Western public, at least uh, some of it, goes completely bananas and they don't care. And again, you have to understand, modern... Uh, uh, <clears throat> modern generation, however you call it, X, Z. Actually, if you look at uh, actually those who are today 35 up to 40, they are also brainwashed and they will vote for anybody who manipulate their uh, uh, feelings better. Here we, ha we have the whole generation of the uh, virtue signaling. And yeah, you see the guy on Tesla, you pretty much can be sure he will be <laughs> basically voting the uh, Democrat in the United States. So that is how simple it is. Those people have no clue. And many of them, many of them, they live the, in the alternative moral universe where they do not understand the difference between right and wrong. It's a metaphysical issue. It's more than just issue of, for example, Canada opening its arms. And they know, they know whatever the uh, hell the name of this uh, Canadian intelligence. And they all know. They will do nothing about it. And Justin Trudeau already stated, I I'm not apologizing. Sure, Canada, you elected them. Enjoy. So, this is my uh, talk about this thing. But uh, what I want to say, however, is the fact that we still have the special military operation. And you remember, just last video, I spoke about the fact that the Kadra Bundeswehr people have been killed with Leopard. 
one of the leopards russia burns many of those tanks now and they were uh country uh, uh soldiers uh, servicemen now of course the Lugan press of germany said no it's not true there are no cadre officers of course we know anything which comes out of german media is automatically should be viewed as the basically deliberate lie they don't have people of honor or integrity and generally speaking if you look today especially with the news that u.s government forbade tucker carson to take interview from vladimir putin I mean, guys, uh, can we drop the pretense? It's it's, it's becoming a totalitarian state, and uh, you know what? There are a bunch of morons from all over, especially in the uh, in the United States, primarily coastal cities, with those cretins with all those degrees and nothing from all kinds of those Ivy League who think that they are actually are uh, literate and educated people. They are not. They all vote for that. They want that because Russians have the charm for it it's liberal fascism liberal fascism but again you cannot explain to some cretin from harvard from the political science department what real fascism is what real nazism is what real warfare what real war is they have no clue they all grew up while creating this you know the soap opera of those disciplines which absolutely meaningless the same as the uh, economics as they taught in the western universities and they believe that they know something they don't everything just collapses and we know that it is collapsing because look around yourself and again just looking at uh, canada uh, this weekend everything you need to know and it's inconceivable. They used to be actually proud of the lie of the anti-Hitler coalition. Not anymore. They compl It is infamy. And then, of course, we get to this issue. So now suddenly people begin to repost it about from uh, the New York Times that, oh my God, shocking new detail. U.S. Army Hospital in Germany is treating American soldiers hurt fighting in Ukraine. New York Times writes, the Army Lynch Tool Regional Medical Center has quietly started admitting Ukrainian Army soldiers who were wounded in combat, most of them American. First, this is absolutely not the news. And again, Russians uh, already operate with different kind of estimates. For example, how many American soldiers? Yeah, it, it, you know what? Most of them are people with the undercover, with the legend, allegedly former soldiers. Obviously, in, uh, only kindergarten kids by this BS. But uh, Russians know that there are several thousand of them. Uh, some people say up to three thousand have been killed. Is it possible? Possible. How probable it is? I don't know. We know that the butcher bill is terrifying and right now we have the news about this if you look attentively this is a, a strv um one to two it's swedish tank if you it reminds you of something yes it is the other version of leopard allegedly more modern more swedish i don't know maybe they put the ikea furniture into it but the point is that now russians just kill those tanks too so and couple of them have been uh, blown up uh, over the weekend and you know so basically we see how nato uh, equipment uh, performs it sucks really badly so and now we have the Ab uh, abrams tanks and now they're um uh, this i cannot confirm please those who uh, can go and look it up in the internet uh, 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 until it's completely censored and until it's completely controlled you have to look it up but i think so it was lord austin today uh, speaking uh, about uh, the Abrams tanks which are coming and he says that Russians cannot hunt them they need to play by the rules I don't know what, what the rules he is talking about but yeah it's already kind of the hedging and you know even if it's not true and again don't quote me on that but uh, basically yeah Abrams will burn as well as any uh, anything else so no matter what kind of version of Abrams it's it just as I already stated and this is what I uh, am on the record for many years now that uh, I don't think so they really know how to fight modern war and I wrote a piece on the uh, actually competence of the uh, those American generals like Petrao, Skin, you know all those and uh, I can responsibly state that people whom I know they are dumbfounded and they say I mean are those people for real 
Yeah, they are for real. They are utterly militarily incompetent. They do not understand what modern warfare is. They don't understand what combined arms warfare is. And yeah, when you have Petraeus who wrote allegedly field manuals on the counterinsurgency, how about Mr. David Petraeus starts learning the real R-E-A-L, history of the World War II and what, for example, tank warfare, armor warfare, and massive combined arms warfare operations are. Evidently, none of them, those people, those American generals who go out and uh, operate as uh, so-called military experts in, um, in the uh, American or Western media, they have no clue. My gosh, I mean, this is the, again, as I already stated, it's a shocking discovery when you understand that, uh, oh my God, you probably will have some major who is battalion commander or chief of staff of uh, ra uh, regular Russian motor rifle battal battalion, he will talk to them and he will talk to them, you know, looking down on them because those people do not understand basic fundamentals which form the modern warfare. But again, when you fight Afghanistan uh, weddings, you know, or Iraqi weddings, yeah, well, that's what you get. But uh, just not to... Um, be outdone about it. Uh, so, and here we have uh, British Express. It's it's a pro-Ukrainian newspaper. They've been publishing a lot of crap, garbage. As it's pretty traditional from uh, uh, from any kind of the Western uh, media, but especially British tabloids where no normal people work. And here it is. We have the Express, which uh, uh, four days ago writes this, and this is a shocker, really. Uh, you. Ukraine bombshell, million shell, millions of EU citizens are praying Putin will win. Uh, okay, now, so what do they mean by this? And what they mean by this is this. Whisper it quietly, but Eastern European attitudes towards the war in Ukraine are beginning to turn in Russia's favor, or at least moving away from Ukraine. It seemed unco seems unconscionable, but uh, peek behind the current at, uh, attitudes and trends among those in Russia's former sphere of influence, and some startling truth emerge. Um, let me explain what those startling truths are. Uh, take Poland, for example. Uh, Russians and Poles, as people generally, except for the some absolutely brainwashed uh, segments, uh, I grew up with truckload of Polish culture, for example. All Soviet uh, kids and Soviet young people grew up with that. I have no problems with Poles generally. I love Polish culture. I love, you know, the Poland generally is a beautiful country in many respects, not all of it. But they are conservative people. They are Catholics. So there is a lot of commonalities, actually, in this respect between Russians and Poles. And of course, but when you have all those uh, Polish uh, uh, psychopaths like Zbigniew Brzezinski, and you have people who hated Russia and for centuries, basically, you get this issue that, well, there you go, you know, Poland is the part of European Union and NATO, and now Poland is facing the stop of any kind of the uh, privileged loans and grants which it enjoyed for the uh, uh, 20 plus years from the European Union, because European Union and NATO in general needed to want uh, to make out of Poland this facade of the uh, economic prosperity. In reality, they deindustrialized Poland and Polish economy is primarily service economy, nowadays. In other words, they produce nothing. And Poles feel that. They feel issue of the economic pinch. They have the issue with the Ukrainian grain and all that. All that is the result of the absolutely not job policies of the Polish political elite. But normal people, obviously, they do not want that. They want to live their lives, which is absolutely normal. This is a common, common human condition. And when they look and they understand, Poles are not stupid they could be stubborn as hell but i mean my gosh they are not stupid people they have fine art they have wonderful science and all that so but i mean when you, <laughs> you look at this and if especially if you're a polish farmer if you're a polish guy who before that you had the, your family have been warmed up by you know russian uh, gas and you know russian energy uh you have now what 
you have uh, 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 prices absolutely shooting through uh, through the stra stratosphere, uh, consumer prices, including the prices on the crucial uh, commodities, which are of course both coal, of course gas and ga uh, gasoline and things of this nature. So what do you want? You begin to look for those who are responsible for that, who are responsible for that. And then people begin to understand. And now Poland enjoyed in full what Ukrainian refugees are. And you have to read Polish press to understand what is going on there. And that's just one example. And people, uh, you ask me the question why Fidesz in Hungary, which is conservative uh, party, and Viktor Orban uh, win the elections all the time because they don't want women with, uh, I mean, uh, a man's member with the dick. They don't want that. They want to have normal family, they want to have normal kids, bring them up in normal human environment, which is environment between the families of mother and father who are different genders, and uh, men and women. And then suddenly, I mean, any normal, for example, in Germany, those who are, which I don't know how many are left there, who are not brainwashed, many of Germans actually moving to Russia and Eastern European countries precisely because of that, especially Germans who still have any kind of Christian root left in them. They do not want this. They don't want multiculturalism. They don't want support Ukraine. They don't want to deal with this. They want to go back and, you know, live normal life. This is how you, you create the family. You grow up, you know, br bring up your children, and there you go. And then suddenly they begin to understand they don't support the war in Ukraine. War in Ukraine destroy, is destroying European Union. Actually, it's already destroyed, if you don't know. But that's the problem. We have so much to talk about that I have to stop, I have to stop uh, here today and I probably will make video in the next couple of days precisely about economics of this unless of course we will have the British Parliament now you know applauding the veterans of the SS division which I will not be surprised as I already stated majority of the political top of the West especially in Anglo-Saxon Saxon countries and especially in Germany for example they want Russians killed I mean literally again as I already stated those people, they uh, they don't know what war is. You think James Clapper knows anything about it? He's absolutely Ill illiterate moron. But he ran the NSA at some point of time. Now he's back to the intelligence, quote-unquote, duty with Biden administration. They not only just miscalculated. They destroyed the Western civilization. And they will continue to accelerate this pro process of destruction. And again, as I already stated, the situation with the Canada and with the economics and what is happening in the Eastern Europe, among other places, is just the private manifestations of what we see of the internal implosion of the Western civilization as we used to know it in the last 70 years. And again, they betrayed the principles, at least which they declared, which were the principles of humanism and value of human life. No, they don't value anything. Take average American or uh, Canadian or uh, any other British politicians, they're genocidal maniacs. Most of them will be, they will be glad to support any kind of the initiative which kills more Russians. And the reason they do it, because as I am on the record and people ask me why the West hates Russia so much. Very simple. Two things. They cannot defeat Russia. They tried for many hundreds of years. The United States have, haven't been even around when Russia already was fighting the West successfully beating it back. And secondly, Russia actually, without going and, you know, importing the Western uh, ideology and philosophy such as, for example, was Marxism, which later became Marxism-Leninism, and it played a very important role in Russian history. No, Russia on its own can produce universal ideology. Even without trying, like it happened now, nobody sits there. There are no institutes of the Marxism, Leninism. There are no ideologues who sit there and write those ideologies. Russians just do it because they did it and it's universal. It is conservative in classic sense, not American conservative. There, America doesn't have normal conservatives. It's all uh, show, it's all uniparty, it's uh, just all different manifestations of neoliberalism. No, we're talking about uh, conservatism, which is real conservatism. And this is conservatism, which is a fundamental in what 
great uh, Russian mind and the founder of the first uh, uh, Russian university, Mikhail Vasilyevich Lomonosov, wrote already in the 18th century about the preservation of Russian people. Of course, Solzhenitsyn stole his idea, but the main idea is preservation of people. In Mikhail Vasilyevich Lomonosov, it was the preservation of Russian people, and in other nations, it's preservation of their own people, giving them chance to live and prosper. This is what is this all about. The liberal fascist ideology, which is professed by the majority of the political class in the West, including the so-called conservative. Lindsey Graham is um, a freaking genocidal maniac. Uh, just one example. If you look at the most of Republican senators or congressmen, they are just not jobs. I mean, they want to kill people, of course, by somebody else, because most of them are cowards. They will uh, soil their pants when they have even 30 millimeter guns starting shooting around them. But <clears throat> that's the point. And then suddenly you have this ideology, which Russians profess now, and which comes uh, head to head with that. Guess what? Who is going to win? And this is my words for you today, guys. And yeah, I was going to do one thing, I ended up doing completely another. So uh, for those who like what I do, guys, please subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, please uh, support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee or 12 for 25. I'm just joking. So, okay, guys, uh, this is your happy Monday and have uh, uh, the nice rest of your week. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.